How are you guys doing? Should we wait a couple minutes or should we just jump in? I say let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to pass it off to you, Heidi. Okay, um, so I'm just going to briefly introduce myself. Um, I want to thank you guys, first of all, for showing up and uh, being willing to move with me today. Um, so please grab a foam roller. You won't need it right away. I'm going to use it probably five to 10 minutes in after a warm up. But as you guys locate that prop, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna do together today. So um, for those of you who might not be aware, uh, Zaina is my physical therapist and she has been a huge help in me learning more about stabilizing my pelvis. I uh, have uh, hypermobility at the sacroiliac and throughout the pelvic girdle. And um, I've been learning to tame that, you know, it waxes and wanes and depends on the day. But what tends to help me is um, abdominal work, working the hip extensors, and then hopefully I will also have time to be opening our chest today using the foam roller. So nothing I'm going to do is reinventing the wheel. I just thought it would be really nice for all of us to move together, um, get the energy flowing in the body and um, do a class that's really for you guys. So like I said, it's, it's uh, nothing too fancy, but hopefully it will help make us all feel a little bit better by the end. Um, and with that said, I also would encourage each and every one of you to modify. So if there's anything that I do that your body doesn't like, um, you're all teachers of movement, please find something that will work the same muscle focus. Um, but I encourage you to modify according to your body's needs. Um, I'm also going to encourage anybody with hyperlordosis or a shifty pelvis to get a pillow. I'll tell you why. I'm going to mimic some of the exercises that Zaina did last week prone on our tummies. And maybe you would want a pillow to go under your low abdomen at one point or another. So if you want it, grab it. If you don't think you'll need it, you don't have to. Okay, it's just so we have our props ready in advance. All right, our arms can be in one of two positions, either alongside the body like so, okay, just straight, or out to the side with the palms facing upward. That's just gonna give you an opportunity to open your chest a little bit if you don't need the assist of placing the arms down on the floor, okay? Because palms facing down is just gonna offer a little bit more support and ability to press into the mat as needed. Okay, so feet are in a parallel position and take a moment to just breathe. For me, breath is of extreme importance when moving the body. So we're gonna start with three Pilates breaths all together, inhaling with your nose and exhaling out of your mouth. Inhaling deeply and exhaling completely once more expanding the ribs and exhaling to gently contract the belly please take a deep inhalation and on an exhale we're just going to start with a pelvic tilt gently guiding that low back into the mat that's all the more we're going to do and then inhale to find neutral pelvis Exhale, imprinted position, and inhale, neutral pelvis. I want us to do this five more times, uh, also known as coccyx curl. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, low back in the mat. So as we continue, just try to keep your bottom relaxed and really be inquisitive and feel if you can gently lift the muscles of the pelvic floor, helping to guide that lumbar spine into the mat, feeling the release and relaxation in neutral, and gently pulling the low abdomen in toward the lumbar spine as we tilt. Let's do one more, big inhale in neutral, and exhale pelvic tilt. Inhale, neutral pelvis, and we're going to exhale and rise up into our first shoulder bridge today, articulating through the spine. Stay up to breathe in, 
And exhale to lower down sequentially, glutes relaxed and neutral, pause to inhale. Exhale, that pelvic tilt leads you up into your shoulder bridge. Stay up to breathe in. And exhale to lower down. Pause to inhale in neutral. You're going to exhale and rise up. This time I want you to be a little generous with your shoulder bridge. Let's say we're finding a clean diagonal line from knee to shoulder. You're not going past that but we're working toward neutral, breathe in. Exhale, elongate your spine as you descend. So let's say that that was our maximum. We're never gonna exceed that. Breathe in. Exhale, revisit that place, that clean diagonal line from knee to shoulder, and I'm gonna keep us lifted this time and make a few minor adjustments. I'd like everybody to lower their pelvis just one to two inches, just a little bit. Continue to breathe. Reach your sit bones toward the back of your knees and your pubic bone toward your nose. Take an additional breath and think of gently engaging your upper abdominal as the low ribs descend toward your spine. My hope is that you feel a lot of work in your hamstrings and buns and that you feel the support of your belly. Inhale deeply. Exhale, stretch your spine as you lower down sequentially, glutes relax. So I'm gonna say that was probably my favorite bridge for all of us, myself included. Breathe in. So we're gonna do three more like that one. Exhale, pelvis doesn't go quite as high because you're gonna be good. You're gonna think of opening your low back, inhaling. Exhaling in the interest of getting those buns and hamstrings to fire a little more efficiently. Inhale and neutral. Exhale, up we go again. We breathe in. Exhale, create some traction as you lower, pulling feet to shoulders. Glutes relax and neutral. I'm actually gonna keep us down now. I'm gonna give us a little variation. Please bring your feet and legs fully together, okay? Knees are touching, feet are gently touching. You're gonna inhale. We're gonna bridge again, but you're gonna let your pelvis be a little lower than it would usually be, just a little bit, okay? So that we can let the first focus be gently squeezing our legs together and of second importance or lesser importance, the height of the pelvis. So give me a little tuck and tail. Pubic bone to nose, tailbone toward the back of the knees. Relax your face, neck, and shoulders. Feel the support of your belly. Inhale. Exhale, lift your hips one inch. Inhale, lower an inch. Exhale, lift an inch. You're going to do that eight more times. If for any reason this is a little stressful to you, you can also just hold. You're going to get a lot of work just holding. Otherwise, we have five more. Four, and it's a very small action. Three two, and one. Please hold. Inhale. Exhale. Elongate your spine. Get that upper back down first, and then everything else sequentially lowers. Take one Pilates breath as you turn your head from side to side. Bring your head to center. Bring one leg into tabletop, followed by the other. Grasp behind your knees. And just lengthen your legs up toward the ceiling. Flex and point your feet. Take one big breath there. Waking up the feet, elongating the hamstrings. Okay, then we're going to bring the legs into tabletop position. Please do guide the arms out to the side, palms facing upward. I actually have to reposition my mat due to traffic in my living room. Okay. All right. And then we're going to inhale. Let's go... Bring the legs directly to the right like windshield wipers. Keep your left shoulder down. Use abs and exhale to pull you center. Inhale, legs go to the side, left side. Exhale to pull center. This is spine twist supine. Inhale, legs go right. Exhale to pull center, also known as metronome legs. Inhale, left. Exhale, pull center. Nice warm up for the obliques and the low back. Less is more, right? 
and exhale. I'm just gonna do one more of these. Inhale, left, and exhale, right. Okay, one foot down, followed by the other. Okay, now I want you to just have a moment. Ankles in alignment with hip sockets. Really feel your neutral pelvis with legs and buns that are soft and relaxed. We're going to interlace the hands behind the base of the skull. And let your head stay on the floor for a moment. Let your elbows go quite wide. Give me a deep breath and relax through your face, neck, and shoulders, as well as the pelvis. We're going to lift our elbows two inches up toward the ceiling, give or take. You're going to draw your shoulder blades gently down your back to get those lats to wake up a little bit. Big distance between the ears and the shoulders. Breathe in. Exhale, nod your chin in toward your throat. We're coming up into chest lift. You're going to stay up to breathe in. And exhale to lower. Pause to inhale on the mat. Exhale, nod your chin in towards your throat. Sink your ribs to lift your chest. Stay up to breathe in. Exhale to lower. Inhale, neutral pelvis. Exhale, you're gonna come on up. I'm gonna keep us lifted now, you guys. Please stay lifted, keep breathing. I want you to look right at your pubic bone and you're gonna open and close your legs now. Make sure your thighs are soft like jelly. They should just be jello jello. If they're not, your legs are doing your ab work. So I'm gonna ask you to try and fix that, okay? Inhale, exhale, and I'll elaborate more as we continue to move. So inhaling, head is down. As you exhale and lift, your low back can go down, but it's because you sink your ribs and not because you tuck your butt. Stay up, breathe in. And exhale to lower. Three more. Inhale deeply. Exhale, lift. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep us lifted. Keep breathing, but I'm not going to do the leg shake. I want you to look at your pubic bone and see if you can get it to travel away from your nose ever so slightly, just a little. And then as you breathe, could you lift a hair, one more vertebrae up off of the mat, breath in. And exhale down. Two more, inhale. Exhale, sink the ribs to lift the chest. Stay up, breathe in. Exhale to lower. One more time, make it a winner, big inhale. Exhale, pubic bone away from the nose. The ribs sink. You breathe in at the height of it, and you exhale to lower with care. Lovely. Please keep the right hand behind the base of your skull. Reach your left arm up toward the ceiling. Okay, you're going to breathe in. Exhale, give me an upper ab curl. You're going to place your left hand on the outside of your right leg. Okay, now we're all instructors, so I want you to notice is your right hand waist longer than your left? It shouldn't be, right? You're not laterally flex, flexing, you're in flexion with rotation. You're gonna look either at your low belly or your left thumbnail, breathe in. Exhale, sink the ribs to lift the chest. Same concept, we just added rotation. Exhale, lift, inhale, barely lower. Exhale, lift, inhale, barely lower. We're gonna do five more. Let your left hip be heavy. Try not to let your head go too low. You're not, that 10 to 12 pounds of head is already up. I don't want you to have to lift and lower it continuously. Last two. Go one more time. Sink that low belly as you exhale and lift. And rest. Other side. Left hand behind the base of the skull. Right arm up toward the ceiling. Give me a big breath in. Exhale, here we go. Same thing, other side. Right hand on the outside of the left leg. Left waist is still short. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, sink the ribs to lift you. Inhale, barely lower. Exhale, sink the ribs to lift you. Inhale, barely lower. You're going to go for five. For four. Relaxed bottom. Three. You're supporting your head with your hand. You're allowed. As long as that left shoulder blade is hugging your rib cage. Please go one more time, breathy exhale. Beautiful. Okay, head down. 
All right, guys, we're gonna go into a little figure four stretch. I want you to put your left ankle on top of your right knee, okay? You're gonna curl up, interlace your hands behind your right knee, set your head down. And I know we're probably all super familiar with this stretch, but I'm, I'm gonna approach it my way and hopefully you might gain and glean a little something from that. So to start, let your arms go straight, even if you feel like I don't get a stretch at all when my arms are straight. Back off for a second. And now think of neutral pelvis. Let your pubic bone go away from your nose and your tailbone go toward the mat, just a little bit. So we've pushed the pubic bone away. Now we're gonna pull with our arms a little bit. So we've created this lovely internal push-pull with my goal being that we try to avoid flexion of the lumbar spine. Now to be clear, I don't wanna exaggerate. I don't want you an extension, but I want a long spine. Then if you want more here, please lean your hips to the right. We're gonna hold for three deep breaths. And um, just to shed light on what it's like for me, someone with a hypermobile sacroiliac, I tend to have a piriformis that works way too hard all the time. So this is really juicy um, for those of us whom have that tight piriformis. So just enjoying, take one more breath. Maybe a client of yours with a hypermobile sacroiliac might benefit from something like that. So let's do the other side. I'm gonna give the short version of what I said on the other side, which is less is more to start, straight arms, feel and experience neutral first, then add the pull of the arms. And if you need a little bit more to get stretched, you would gently rotate and place more body weight on your left hip. But be mindful as well, the body's so smart, it might wanna go into lateral flexion or side bending to cheat. So you're gonna monitor that because you're teachers and you know exactly what that means. Let's take two big breaths here. One more. Lovely. Okay, let's bring the legs to center. The feet are gonna go flat, okay? I'm going to do an exercise that I would how can I say? It's one of those more subtle ones. It's not going to be slam bang, but it's uh, one that I recently learned from a video on Pilates Anytime. I'll talk about that after our class if anybody's interested about stabilizing the sacroiliac, and I found it to be so fascinating. So I want everybody to think neutral pelvis, um, feet in parallel. I'd like you to touch the right hip point, that right ASIS and your 12th rib on the left-hand side, okay? And I believe this exercise is referred to as butterfly knees or um, knee, uh, bent knee openings, okay? So all we're gonna do is feel those two points without moving, right? Have a breath and observe the distance between your left low rib and your right hip point. We do not want that distance to get longer or shorter, okay? So you're going to inhale, let the right knee go out to the side only as far as you can go without the right hip point moving, which is very small for me. It's very hard for me. Exhale, pull center. Okay, let's do that five times. Inhale, right knee out to the side. Exhale, pull center. We have three more. I'm going to talk about what I'm experiencing. So my left side is my tough one. And right now I just feel like my left back is kind of like, woo, this is tough. So what I'm gonna do is anchor my left hip into the mat and that really helped tremendously. I'm anchoring my opposite side. I think we have one more here. Okay, let's switch our hands. Let's transition to the other side. Left ASIS, right 12th rib. Okay, and then I'm going to inhale, let that left knee open out to the side, pelvic floor, inner thighs, and abdominals guide the knee back in. And just to shed some light on this, as someone who struggles to stabilize the pelvis, this is very hard for me, especially for dancers, because we just are so used to pushing this position and turnout. 
that it's incredibly hard to not let that knee actually just go bam down to the floor. And it takes a lot of inner thigh, pelvic floor, and belly. So I hope you're feeling that subtle benefit or that work. Let's do one more. Maybe try anchoring your right hip into the floor. Okay. And now, just so you guys know, um, we could progress that. We could bring the legs in tabletop. Actually, you know what? I'll do, I'll do three on each side with the tabletop progression because it's really fascinating. Okay. So legs in tabletop. Please place your left hand on your left knee. Okay. And then I want you to touch your right hip point. Now, with your left hand on your left knee, gently press your left knee into your left hand to make a little isometric contraction. It's small, right? But it's there. Now open the right knee out to the side and exhale, pull center. Now this is tough work. We're, we're increasing the work, right? I'll speak for myself, it's pretty hard for me. And we'll do one more on this side. Let's try the other, right hand on the right knee, left hand on the left hip. Inhale, open that left leg. Don't let that left ASIS move. Exhale, pull center. Make sure you have that pressure of right knee and right hand. Exhale, pull center. One more time. And exhale. I'm going to do one more variation. So this is what technically we would consider to be the hardest. Legs go straight up. Okay. If you have tight hammies and you need a baby bend in your knees, that's perfectly fine, but legs are straight up. Left hand on left knee, right hand on right AS, IS. Inhale, open a straight leg out to the right, directly to the side, exhale, pull center. We'll only do two more, inhale. Exhale, pull center. Last one, that feedback of leg into hand is really helpful for me. Okay, let's try the other side. Right hand, right knee, left hand on the left hip point. Inhale, open left leg out to the side. Exhale, pull center. Two more, inhale and exhale. Final one. And exhale. Okay, super, you guys. Feet go down. Okay, now what I wanna do is Continue to build upon that. So legs are bent, pelvis is in neutral. Left leg is gonna find tabletop position. Uh, we're all familiar with this. This is gonna be a single, or actually let's flex the left foot. Inhale deeply, exhale, tap that left heel on the mat. Inhale to lift. We're just doing single leg. I won't say toe tap, I'll say heel tap because we're tapping the heel um, and just, I don't know if other teachers have found this. I learned this from my mentor. Um, when you tap the heel down, for whatever reason, people tend to not want to bend their knee anymore. They start to move at the hip a lot better. So that's really interesting. Uh, I used to always do it with a pointed foot, especially with the dance background, but with a flex foot, people tend to give better results. Please do one more. Of course, you're trying not to let your pelvis move. Set that foot fully down. Let's do about five on the other side. Tabletop right leg, big breath in. And exhale. Tap that right heel down, inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Good. And if you needed to, you can imprint here. It just depends on your body, right? That's a perfectly viable option as long as you're using your abs to maintain imprint and you're not hyper aggressive. My left side is my shifty side, so I'm going to anchor my left hip a little more on the mat. That helps me so much. Please do one more. I should admit I'm a terrible counter. So if I, I do the wrong reps, you'll have to forgive me. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're going to build on what we just did. Let's go ankles in alignment with hip sockets, arms alongside the body. Give me a nice inhalation. Exhale, you're gonna rise up into a shoulder bridge. Okay, now at the beginning, I had us do that like quite high lift, neutral spine, not exceeding, and then we lowered the pelvis a hair. I kinda want you to visit that place again. You're, you're in a nice lift, but it's not aggressive. You tuck your tail, you let the low ribs rest. 
to open up the back, okay? We're gonna inhale lower and exhale lift. We're gonna pulse again. But now I want you to make sure you have pressure on the inside edge of your feet and that your knees are in alignment with your hip sockets. And as you pulse, I wanna let you guys know in a moment, I am gonna give us a progression. If the progression that I offer you doesn't feel good on your body or you can't keep your two hip points level, I would like you to return to this pulsing exercise with both feet on the mat. We'll go for three, breathe for two, and one. Hold there, breathe in. I am gonna have us lower and elongate. Feel neutral. For me, checking in with neutral a lot is very important. Inhale here. Exhale, you rise again. And just to be clear, our ankles are in alignment with our hip sockets. Our feet are at least fist distance apart, okay? So everybody touch your hip points. If these two points can't stay level with what we do next, you're gonna return to pulsing. Everybody please stabilize in your left leg. Table top your right. Inhale, exhale, tap the mat with that right big toe. Inhale, lift, exhale, tap. It's exactly what we were just doing to challenge the abdomen, except for we're in a shoulder bridge. We're gonna do three more. Two more. Last one here. Set that foot down, reorganize your feet. Okay? You're continuing to touch the hip points. If you want the feedback, it's not a requirement. Tabletop left leg. Make those hip points level. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, tap that left big toe. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. We're going to do five. Focus on those hip points and your breath. Four. Three. Final two. And one. Set that foot down. Reorganize your feet. Pause to breathe in. Arms relax down. Exhale, lay down your spine. Beautiful. Okay, guys. Knees in toward your chest. Take hold of your knees, feet together, and then just pull your knees in towards your chest. You're circling those knees in or toward the chest, stirring them, breathing. And then we reverse the circles. Okay, I'm going to give us one more abdominal challenge before we um, change what we're doing here. So we're going to go into double leg stretch. I want to encourage you guys if your neck hurts just keep your head down the choreography stays the same i love double leg stretch because it makes me feel so stable in my pelvis and low back and i'm not shifting too much in my hips so one leg into tabletop followed by the other it is your choice whether the head comes up or down reach those hands forward toward your knees give me a nice inhale Exhale, rise if you choose to. Now, for those of you who have lifted, I'm gonna give kind of a specific cue, so hang with me for a moment here, guys. I want you to look at your tummy. You're grasping your knees, fingertips are facing inward toward each other. I want you to push your knees into your hands to get one to two more vertebrae up. I want you to come to your legs. I don't want your legs to come to you. I want you up there, okay? You're gonna inhale very deeply. Exhale, stretch those limbs in opposition. Inhale, circle round, take hold of your knees. And exhale. And inhale, beautiful. Exhale. And inhale, I love seeing all of you move. We're gonna do 10. And nine. As you continue here, really try and think about straightening your legs all the way and connecting to your inner thighs. If your head is up, you're looking at the low ab to make sure it sinks each time you exhale and stretch your legs in opposition. If your head is down, I encourage you to gently imprint the low back in the mat. Final three, I know, I think I added some, but it's because you're all moving so nicely. Two, do one more. Can we all hold the last one? Hold it, take a breath. And rest, absolutely beautiful, head down. Turn the head from right to left. Take a big breath in your nose and a long breath out of your mouth. Okay. Foam roller time, everybody. 
please grab your foam rollers. We're going to put them lengthwise under our spine. Okay, so you're going to grab the roller, put it right in the middle of your mat, and you're going to lay on down. There we go. All right, so just taking a moment, when we put this roller under our back, I really do think it's worth just taking an extra second to make sure your spine feels very, very long and decompressed um, because that roller really brings the chest open and the head back in alignment with the spine, which is so nice, but we want to encourage that in a healthy way by elongating. So in fact, I'll, I'll tell you the cues that I usually give my clients. So your feet are on the mat, your arms are down on the floor, you lift your butt, tuck your tail, give me a tiny bridge and stretch out your low back and lay everything right back down. Just trying to stretch away from armpits. Then we're gonna do the opposite. Put your hands on top of your thighs, inhale very deeply. And exhale, upper abdominal curl. Now as you lay down, you're just gonna stretch from the base of your shoulder blades to the base of your skull. Long, 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 okay. And now we're good to go. Buns are relaxed, feet are in parallel. Okay. Um, and like I said, I'm certain a lot of you are quite familiar with these exercises, but it's, it's stuff that I hope will benefit us as teachers. So no reinventing the wheel, but hopefully it'll feel good on your body. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, tabletop our left leg. Reach the right arm up toward the ceiling. Inhale very deeply. And we're gonna exhale and mimic double leg stretch again. Inhale, pull those limbs to your midline. Exhale, stretch them in opposition. I only want three to five. My goal really here for you guys is to find your balance, to find your center. Please don't let your low back arch. The left leg does not need to go low. Keep your abdominal connection and your right shoulder blade down your back with a stable right shoulder. We'll do one more. And then you're gonna pull center right there. Okay, we're gonna hold. We're gonna have a wonderful balance challenge of lifting the left arm up toward the ceiling. So for some of us, this might be really hard. Okay, I'm gonna start with cues if it's really hard. Number one, I don't think you need to lift your left arm up toward the ceiling, okay? You could always just keep your left arm level with your spine like you're doing the 100. That way, if you need the floor, it's pretty close. But let's assume since we're teachers, we're doing all right, okay? So if you feel stable, you're going to exhale, stretch the limbs in opposition, and inhale to pull center. Please remember, this is optional. If, if you feel good, please do three more. If it's really tough for you, please be patient with yourself and just work on the balance. That's fine. You're going to go one more time. Pull center. Let's all balance together for one Pilates breath. Arms down, left leg down with grace and control. Okay. Right leg up, left arm up. Breathe in to prepare. Exhale, stretch those limbs in opposition. Inhale to pull center. Exhale, stretch. And inhale to pull center. So thinking about as you straighten your right leg, again, this is, and this is a reference to what I feel in my body. You'll have to adjust according to your own. But I don't want my leg to go super low because it encourages me to arch my low back and lose my connection in the front. And the connection in the front is what I'm after. So. Leg doesn't have to be too low here. Nice, long left-hand side of neck. Let's pull center. I think that was about enough. Okay, we're going to hold for a breath. Nice and steady. And then when you're ready, right arm reaches up toward the ceiling. This side is much harder for me. I bet you guys will find you have one side that's just a different ball of wax. So I'm going to focus on my balance here today. But if you feel stable on this side, please do five double leg stretch variation four three two and one 
Hold, we're all gonna hold for a breath like we did on the other side. We're gonna unite balancing. And then leg down, arms down. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, arms are gonna stretch up toward the ceiling, palms face inward toward each other. We're gonna inhale to separate our shoulder blades, reach our fingers up toward the ceiling and exhale to drop your upper arm bones into your shoulder sockets. Inhale, stretch and reach. And exhale to drop for shoulder slaps. Let's do five. Four, check that your hips are relaxed, your pelvis is neutral, three, and the muscles of the face are soft, two, and one. Okay, super. Palms of hands are going to face the tops of the thighs, arms are going to reach back, and then we're just gently going to bend our elbows into two little goal posts. We're going to pull our elbows in and down toward the imaginary back pockets of our jeans into chicken wings. We reach our fingers toward our feet and then we go into snow angels. Bend the elbows, cactus arms. Elbows pull in and down toward the imaginary back pockets of your jeans. You move only your forearms, east and west, right and left. And then you go out to the side to make a snow angel. So I'm gonna explain it a little slower, a little more clearly. So come into the goal post position, two 90 degree angles. I'm gonna talk about the chicken wing a little bit more. So what is key here is a, imagining for a moment, I put a one pound weight in our hands. The knuckles are heavy, the hands are heavy. Now be mindful, you know, don't go to an aggressive stretch that won't serve you, but heavy knuckles, heavy hands. We're gonna keep that sensation, draw the elbows in and down toward the imaginary back pockets of your jeans. As close as you can go, arms are still bent, okay? Right here, this is where we should get a pretty therapeutic stretch, but again, hands have to be heavy. And then you move only the forearm out to the side, east and west, right and left, yeah. Snow angel. And let's just flow through a few more of these. I'm sure we have all been here before. I am so thankful for my foam roller. And we're cruising through chicken wings into our snow angel and then back to our cactus arms. Please breathe. And something I like to remind clients whom perhaps might have an older shoulder or more delicate connective tissue at the shoulder is if it starts to feel too aggressive in the pull, which can be very possible, um, is all you have to do is just gently lift your upper arm bone toward the ceiling to decrease the intensity, right? So we have the power to back off if needed, and I encourage all of you to do that. Let's go one more time because it just feels so good. And then I'm gonna have us reach our arms straight up toward the ceiling, palms face inward toward each other. Go out into a perfect T position and take three Pilates breaths. Close your eyes. Relax your bottom. Engage your belly. Gently. Please stay for one more deep breath, just surrendering to the position. All right. One more little challenge for us here, because why not? You're gonna bring one leg into tabletop followed by the other. Soft point in your feet, gently squeeze those legs together. You're gonna inhale deeply. Exhale, just slide your heels three to five inches forward. Inhale, pull the knees in. If you are um, used to working with Zena, this is predict the load. Um, otherwise, I tend to call this heel slides for my clients because when I say predict the load, they just give me a little cross-eyed stare. <laughs> they don't, they don't know. So knowing it's a small action and that all you want to fish for is the connection of inner thighs to pelvic floor and low belly, trying to quiet the quads and flexors. We'll do two more. Low back gently imprinted on the roller. Last one here. Okay, one foot down, followed by the other. We'll roll to the right and gently allow that roller to come out from underneath us. Get it off to the side and out of the way. And just 
stay on your back for one breath and feel your imaginary roller. <sighs> okay. We have been on our back for a long time, so I'm gonna get us up and we're gonna flip over. Okay. And in fact, I think I'm gonna precurse some work in quadruped with some work prone. So if you like to work with a pillow like I do, now's the time to grab it. You're gonna put it under your low belly. If you don't need it, please don't worry about it, okay? So if you are utilizing the pillow, however, you'll want the pubic bone off and the low abdomen fully supported. And we're just gonna start with basic back extension, okay? Now, if you have any back pathologies like myself, you're gonna keep the ankles at least a good six inches apart. If you don't have any back stuff, you can glue those legs together. Our forehead is gonna go down on the mat. Your hands are gonna reach backwards towards your ankles. Cubic bone down, low belly up and in. You're going to inhale to lift up your upper back. Exhale, go 90% of the way down. Inhale, lift up your upper back. Exhale to go 90% of the way down. I want us to do 10 more. And of course, as we continue to move, I'm gonna talk about it. So feeling in the lumbar spine, that it's open, that you're, tr you're doing your best to not be attached to how high you go, but rather how long you can be, right? Feeling the shoulders roll open and backwards, gently so. And I like to imagine my shoulder blades just gently pulling down in and together like a big V on my back. But I don't get so overzealous with that that I dump right into my low back. So there's a lot going on, right, guys? We have three more. Imagining your fingers are going to touch your ankles. Two. Please do one more. Could you hold the last one? Can we stay there for a breath? Make a pillow with your hands. Turn your head to one side. Relax your bottom and gently rock your pelvis from side to side. I'm going to do one more back extension exercise here. Zaina taught us this one last week. I like it a lot, so we're going to do it. Our wrists are going to go a little wider than our shoulders. Our ankles are mat width apart. Forehead is down on the mat. Pubic bone scoops up and in. On your next exhalation, please lift your head, right arm and left leg. Inhale, lower down. You will alternate sides. Exhale, lift the opposite side. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, feel that the right shoulder blade is down your back as you lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, both scapula are along down the back as you lift. Okay, we're gonna keep on going. Try to think of your opposing extremities, the ones that are anchored on the floor. They could gently press down as to better float up the opposite sides. Again, we're working really toward length rather than just height alone. And let the body guide you. If it doesn't feel nice, you might be pushing too hard. Find, you know, don't be too kind to yourself to where it's easy, but find a place where you feel healthy work and not pain. Let's go one more time each side. Last one. Okay, and we lower hands under shoulders, child's pose. Let's do knees apart, feet together. Extended child's pose, long spine. Take two big breaths here. One more. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and come to quadruped. This will probably be our final good physical push, but hang with me, because it's gonna be a winner. Okay, so my wrists are under my shoulders, I'm externally rotated in my upper arm bones, my neck is very long. I want you guys, so I'm gonna share, I have a, sh again, the, my shifty pelvis as it were. My left hand side is more, my more sensitive side. I'm gonna make my sensitive side stabilize first from experience I've found that serves me better and um, contributes less to my pattern. So basically, 
Whatever side is your sensitive side, I want you to narrow that knee towards your belly button, towards your midline a little. I'm gonna say left knee, okay? Because that's my shifty side. Reach that right leg behind you. If you chose the opposite, you just do the opposite, right? Arms are straight and strong, neck is long. Now, before I even get you to lift that right leg, can I have you curl your toes under, reach through your heel? Okay, really straighten that right leg. Try to feel your right butt cheek gently contract. And however, perhaps even more importantly, the connection to your left hip point and your right low rib. Try not to let that get any longer or shorter. Inhale deeply. Exhale, lift your right leg. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift your right leg. Or opposite leg, if you chose the opposite. You know what to do, we're just lifting. Now again, I am so much more interested in the length of that leg and not letting the distance between my left hip point and my right low rib get long or short than I am with height. So please bear that in mind, you do not wanna arch your low back, you want a nice neutral pelvis and don't drop your beautiful head. Head up, last three. Push that mat away from you. Last two. You're gonna hold this last one. Hold it right there. Bend your right leg, okay? I've got a 90 degree angle shape. I'm gonna inhale to hinge at my hip and lower it. And exhale to lift it and put a footprint on the ceiling. Inhale to lower and exhale to lift. We're gonna do eight more. Please do not arch your low back. So if you don't lift very high, that's fine. I like to feel as well in the front that my low ab is pulling in so much that I feel a very tiny stretch in the front of my right hip flexor. Let's do three more. Two. Hold the last one, final push here, strong arms now. Inhale deeply and exhale gently, pulse that leg up toward the ceiling. But you're not arching your low back, I hope. Eight, seven, pull in that low belly. Six, five, strong arms. Four, three, two, one, and lower down. Okay, or actually, oh, I lied. I'm so mean. Please lengthen your right leg back. I have one more challenge for you. Left arm out in front. You hold for three breaths. Let it be about the rib hip connection, the neutral pelvis. Final breath. Child's pose. Oh, oh, I hope it made you a little tired. It made me tired. Take two big breaths. One more. Okay, back up. Back up to all fours. We gotta do this on the other side and we still have enough time. I'm so glad. Okay, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. We're gonna lengthen the left leg back. And again, keep your left foot down and really take a moment. I do a lot of finagling, but it's mainly to make my body feel good. I've noticed over time, if I feel pain, something's probably wrong. So you're not in pain, you feel stable in the abdomen and you're reaching through that left heel. Inhale to prepare, exhale to lift the leg. Inhale to lower and exhale to lift. And I'm gonna to continue to move here. And this is something I figure is worth sharing sometimes because I'm on my shifty side now that I'm working on to stabilize. But I notice if I internally rotate my leg, it decreases pressure on the sacrum on this side and I feel a more healthy glute contraction. So maybe you could experiment with that um, or you just keep what you're doing. Let's do three more. Final two. And last one. Okay, we hold, foot is flex, leg is bent. Inhale, lower that shape and exhale to lift. Inhale to lower and exhale to lift. You're gonna do eight more. And seven. Last six. Five, pull in the low belly. Four, three, final two. 
Please hold the last one. Strong straight arms. Gently pulse the leg up. 10, 9, 8. Breathe. 7, 6. Get your head up. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're not done. Straighten that left leg. Reorganize your hands if you need to. Cruise right arm out in front and breathe. Two more deep breaths. Push that mat away from you. Strong belly. And rest. Go knees quite wide, feet together. Elongate the spine. Take two deep breaths here. And one more. We're gonna thread the needle. Please bring your right arm under your left. Give me a little bit of gentle rotation. Breathe into it and relax. And let's go ahead and switch sides. Same thing, other side. Couple of breaths. Trying to surrender to the position and breathe. Lovely. Okay, let's go ahead and sit up. I actually would like to end with a little stretch. So if you have tight hamstrings or hip flexors, you're going to want to grab a little pillow to park your bottom on. Um, or you can just try without and you'll see how you go. Um, it is a little bit of a tricky one. I learned this one from Zena. It's the seated pigeon. Okay, so you're going to cross. Think of crossing your legs, but then you're going to guide I'm gonna put my left ankle on top of my right knee. Okay, I'm giving you my profile. If you look at Zaina, she's straight, facing straight forward, so that's helpful, right? And you just want a nice squared pelvis, and the idea is that both sit bones are on the floor, whereas a traditional pigeon, we would kind of have those opposing twisting forces like wringing out a towel. In the seated pigeon, we have both sit bones on the floor, so that's really nice and helpful. Now, if sitting upright and doing this is already a lot for you, you can stay there. If you want to bend forward, you can. I'm going to go for it because it feels good on my body. But do what feels good to your body, right? And we'll stay for three deep breaths. One more. We're going to slowly walk our arms in. Let's do the other side. Even though it's so tempting for me to just do the one that hurts, I'm going to be good and I'm going to do both. And so should you. And then you find your edge, you know, you find what serves your body. If bending forward like me doesn't serve you, you're not going to do that. You're going to find the place that serves you best and you're going to relax there for three breaths. Two. And one. Slowly roll up, okay, and then um, that's where I'm going to leave our class today. I really enjoyed teaching you. I hope it all made sense and resonated with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heidi. Could I ask you a question, Zaina? Yes. So you know when we were doing the quadruped and I was lifting and lowering my left leg and I said internal rotation felt nice on the sacrum. Is there a reason why that might be? Yeah, you're unloading the SI in that back side. So you're just creating a little bit more space back there, I think, is all you're doing. Yeah. So just taking it away from the compression that maybe you get with external rotation. Yeah. How do my guests? There's other PTs in the room. They can pipe in if they don't agree. <laughs> My tr tried and true faithful PTs. <laughs> so I think that's all that you're doing is just giving yourself a little more space, releasing the hip rotators a little bit, and that's probably why it feels better. Yes, thank you guys for all being here. We're going to keep this going um, every week. So I'd love a volunteer for next week. Thank you so much, Heidi, for sharing all that with us. That was great. And then um, if you wanted to post something to get other people involved, the more the merrier. We'd love to have just new faces and 
just to get a bigger community. Thank you very yeah. much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, everybody. So Thank you so much. Nice to see you, Teresa. <laughs> nice to see you. Have a good day.